story time of the time I dated the nice guy. The nice guy. The pathological liar whose heart I broke because I just couldn't take it anymore. Fun fact, I met this guy on Twitter. Also, this is pathetic. <laughs> guy on Twitter and he had been liking my tweets a million times, right? And we'll call him Jason. No, we won't. No, we won't. That's my father's name. We will not call him. We'll call him Jeff. We'll call him Jeff. He'd been liking my tweets and back in the day, liking someone's tweets was kind of like a, hey, I'm trying to get at you. Like this is like a little flirty moment. I caught on. I was like, okay, per, he's liking my tweets. And I look at his account and the profile picture was like an old one. Kind of tell that this picture was like older, but I felt like, oh, maybe he's just like a boy. Like he doesn't ever update his profile picture. No. This is kind of waiting on him to like message me because I was just not interested enough to like be like i see you liking my tweets like let's get together no 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 no, that was not the vibe I end up tweeting something like i hate when people like all my tweets but are too scared to message me like grow up like just like completely dogging him he ends up messaging me and asking me on a date and i was like fair enough like i'll go on a date with him whatever so that was kind of it i was just like yeah i'll go on a date you guys are gonna be at me like why would you want to date with a stranger that's literally how all relationships happen also we had mutual friends so it like wasn't a big deal picking me up in his car which ladies the worst idea in the world always bring your own car to your first day don't have a car like find your own way there there because you want to be able to leave when you want to leave. Next me to get a garbage plate, which I feel like is a reoccurring theme with me in first dates. I'm like, see? And I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm already feeling like, you know, this is not going to work. He's too nice. This is really weird. He's the door for me. And then he stops at his house and introduces me to his father on the first date. But at this time, I had a really hard time like cutting people off and just like ending things where they are because I just felt guilty. I felt like I owed people things. After this date, I kept responding slowly, but like I was still responding. I was still entertaining which I know was messed up. And it was around Valentine's Day. And on Valentine's Day, he shows up at my house after us texting and he brings me a necklace, a teddy bear, and chocolates. A necklace? A necklace? I get a teddy bear and chocolates, but like, we're, like, a necklace? Also, like, the necklace was hideous. I'm sorry. It was, it was really hideous. And I already know what you guys are gonna say. We ended up hanging out again. It was so nice. And I was trying to convince myself, like, Emily, you're supposed to like him. Like, he's nice. He's respectful. Like, you're supposed to like him. And this time, since the second seal had already been torn, we hang out at his house with his father. His dad literally got us, like, chicken and, like, got us a whole dinner. And we just sat in his living room. And then he starts talking to me about the army. Why is this such a man thing to, like, lie about going into the army? To be like, I'm going into the army so that you'll be like, no, stay for me. Stay for me. Like, no. If you want to go, like, do that. Like, do that. Like, I just just go do that. Anyways, we're like boot up on the couch and obviously like we're watching a movie so I can kind of like see his phone. And I'm clocking behaviors. He has it upside down. He's not really checking it that much, but it's getting blown up. It's getting blown up. Why is the nice guy's phone getting blown up? He flips it over quickly and I see my name and it's not my name, but it's someone with the same name as me. It was his ex-girlfriend. It was his ex-girlfriend. He explains to me that they dated and that she's like crazy, like, uh. And I'm just like, right, right. I decided in my head, as soon as I get home, I'm ending this because he lied about wanting to go into the army. He's lying about this girl, whatever, like whatever, whatever. Go to part two. Part two of the story time of the time I tried to date the nice guy and ended up breaking his heart. Sorry that I have to do a part two, but they took my 10 minute feature away. Why do they do this? Anyway, so I decide as soon as I get home that I'm gonna just kind of end this. I feel like he's pathologically lying. I'm just not trusting it. He's too nice. There has to be something wrong with this guy. Plus like his profile picture was so old that like he did not look like that at all anymore. He takes me home and I'm expecting to just like get out of the car, go inside, and then in a couple hours be like, hey, I don't think it's working. Okay, well on the car ride home, he starts telling me how he's falling in love with me. And it had only been like a week and a half. Like, um, that's so sweet, thanks. <laughs> Actually, something I've done a lot, like with every boyfriend I've ever had, they always tell me they love me first and I usually will say thank you because I just have a problem being vulnerable. I guess it's kind of that and it's also like, sometimes I'm just not in love yet. I'm just not there. And in this case, I was just not there. I like say thanks and I walk in the house and whatever and I'm deciding how am I about to go about this? Cause this is going to be horrendous. But at the same time, I felt like he was a pathological liar. I'm like, you're telling me you're going to the army so that I'll simply say stay. And like, all, like you have your girlfriend still basically explain just that i'm like i don't want to be with someone for long distance you know and like i i saw you texting your ex-girlfriend i just don't want the mess he tells me she's like crazy and like they're not together and like you know she still has feelings for him and whatever and i'm just like yeah whatever and i'm cutting it off and he's like heartbroken he's like telling me he's crying he like wants to come see me he like wants to come make up and explain things to me for a really long time part of me felt like wow i kind of fumbled like he was actually really nice until the other day found out on facebook that he is now married to that girl and living in a far away place working for the army he was telling the truth about something though he did in fact go into the army he actually really 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 was really nice i say all of this to say that the nice guy is always just a love bomber and that's why i don't like them he always is giving disingenuine just be a little bit mean to me and i'll probably be interested okay so that's the story bye okay so i'm going to tell the story time about how i found out that one of my friends was the person behind the fake page that would harass me talk about me say mean stuff about me and everything Hold on, I'm gonna get into it. 
So me and this girl, I had moved to the county when I was like 16 and I had made friends with like these three people. And through them people, I had made friends with this one girl. So we were cool. She would, she did braids. So she would come to my house and like do my hair and everything. And like, we was cool. Like when she would like have accomplishments, um, when she would like post her accomplishments, I would congratulate her. Like we were cool. And like, I would even send my family to get their hair done by her. So I was like putting money in her pocket, you feel me? And like, she was in my house doing my hair. So after a while, it was like this fake page who would, who posted me and was like, you're so ugly in person. You're not pretty. I know men be scared of you when they see you in person. You look like a gorilla. Um, what would they would say, hold on. Oh, and this is around a time where I got like Instagram famous. So they was like, I don't know who made this ugly girl Instagram famous. She was just working at Burger King. And mind you, I worked at Burger King when I was 17. They was like, she was just working at Burger King. I don't know who made her famous. Da, da, da. Like they was going in on me. So I ain't really, I ain't really care. But I was like, I wanted to know who it was. So we're going to speed up to about like a month later. I was, I believe I was with a whole bunch of people and we was all chilling so they like oh y'all this how i found out so they was like y'all know who was behind that page and it was like the fake page that would harass me and like see me stuff to me so i knew that the page was saying mean stuff to me so i was quiet when they was talking about it so they were like oh it was the girl and i'm gonna name her brie it was brie i'm like yo when i tell y'all i was so shook mind you me and this girl i don't feel like we were like friends like close but we was like really cool like we would talk a little bit she would come to my house do my hair like we were cool so for her to even do that to me was crazy so here comes the part where i address her so at first i was going to do like a setup type of thing like i was going to get her to do my hair and then when she would come i would beat her up but um she wouldn't text me back fast enough so what I did was I made a post on my Finsta and I tagged her Finsta in it so she can, so we get right. Because at the end of the day, that was weird for me. Okay, y'all. So it was two girls behind a post. It was one girl that I was cool with, friends with, and then it was another girl. I sent her in school, but we wasn't that cool. We didn't really talk. So I made this long post on my Finsta. So after she sent the post, because we even followed each other on our Finsta's, which if y'all know back in the day, if y'all followed somebody on their Finsta, y'all was cool. So she sent the post and she called my phone like, oh, that's what you was calling my phone for. Yeah, that's what I was calling your phone for. Pick up, boo. Uh, so then that's when I'm like, do you want to fight? She's like, oh, I don't want to fight. Da, 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 it's, da, da, da. She didn't want to fight as per usual. They never did. They never did. So the other girl, the one that I wasn't really cool with, she gonna text me on Snapchat like this post is so disrespectful. Da -da -da -da. I don't care. I said I really don't care. Like I don't care. If if I cared if it was disrespectful or not, I wouldn't have posted it. So which one y'all gonna pull up to my house? Because y'all know exactly where I live at. Y'all know my address. Y'all know what's up. So pull up. Nobody pulled up. So then that's when she was getting everybody to text me and was like, "How do you know it was them? How do you know it was them?" She was getting her like friends to text me. So I'm like, if you like y'all, please got my face for you get in it too. Because I'm like that. I'm on I'm on 100 with everybody. Like, what's up? So boom, that just went away. And that's just the moral of the story. That's all that happened. She didn't want to fight. And for somebody who who was going through so much at the time, she should have never had no bad blood in her heart because she was going through a lot in her life. So she should have never said that. And I put everything in the post that I knew because she shouldn't have said what she said in her mouth to me off them fake pages and they tried to act as if they didn't do it but as soon as i addressed them about it all of a sudden the fake page stopped so the fake page just knew i said something to your girl please but that's all that happened as per usual nobody wanted to pull up